Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Folks, this right here, what I'm about to show you guys, is exactly why I could never be a leftist. Well, I can't say I could never be a leftist, because at one point I was in my very younger years. But for sake of conversation, we'll pretend as if that never existed. The point that I'm making is right now, in my current state of mind, I could never, ever associate myself with this kind of ideology. And one of the main reasons is not being able to speak. I already have it hard enough just having to censor my words on YouTube, but this pathetic retracting your statements and avoiding microaggressions and always having to apologize for every little thing that you may say, whether it's the truth or not, having to apologize for basic truths, or having to say completely unscientific, ridiculous garbage in order to satiate the woke Twitter mob is something I could never do. And the examples that we have of this exact phenomenon are endless, one after another. Leftist says something, trying to be funny on Twitter, and instantly has to retract their statement, apologize to everybody, acknowledge their white privilege, and so on and so forth, and the whole thing is just so sad and so pathetic, so cringe. And culturally, it's one of the main reasons why I could never associate myself with these left-wing puritanical censors. Man, do I have an example for you guys today. A viral Twitter post that can only be described by a word that I cannot say on this platform, speaking of censorship, but it's a four-letter word and it starts with a C. I'll leave the rest up to your imagination. But we gotta cover this one, we gotta talk about this, so let me show you guys exactly what's going on. Let's roll the tape. Alright folks, so here is the viral tweet. It's being posted all over Twitter. I'm not sure if the individual is a public figure, so we're gonna blur out his identity for now. Alright, so this anonymous Twitter user writes, Let's go Brandon is code for I think Olive Garden is a fancy restaurant. Now look, it's a little bit of an elitist joke. Is it the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life? Not really, but it's a joke. You put it out into the internet. I'm not hating on you. I think a lot of people are able to be self-deprecating and could maybe even relate to it and laugh at themselves. And so it probably should have ended there. But no, 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 of course not. When you become a leftist, you have to sign a specific social contract. And it's the contract of the four-letter word that I mentioned earlier. This individual immediately follows up his tweet with, I'm daily learning more about my subconscious biases and prejudice from being born and bathed in white Christian hegemony. I'm grateful to be aware of racism, classism, and ableism that I may be perpetuating unintentionally. I didn't think about the subtext of what this joke might communicate. The intent was not to dunk on poor working class folks. As I myself see dinner at Olive Garden as a splurge I can't even afford, or I can't often afford. But impact matters more than intent and clearly this has potentially harmful impacts. Come on. This leftist Twitter sphere stuff is just so sad. You made an Olive Garden joke. Why are you apologizing? And in the most cringy way possible. He's not saying that was a little bit of an elitist joke. Maybe I should check myself. He's going on this whole leftist diatribe using all the buzzwords. Being born and bathed in white Christian hegemony. Racism, classism, ableism. Oh my lord, I can't handle the cringe. I mean, get over yourself, dude. Dude, what is wrong with these people? And it's the same concept that we always see. This is why the left can't meme. Because they can't be normal adult human beings. You made an Olive Garden joke. It was a little bit cliche, but it was kind of funny. It was kind of similar to the Dave Weagle situation from a couple months back. The man who got suspended for supposedly making a sexist joke. Every girl is bi, you just have to figure out whether it's polar or sexual. And once again, it makes me ask the same question. What is What's wrong with you people? It's crazy how we share space with adult babies, with people who just can't grow up, people who can't handle basic humor. You're too soft, you're too sensitive. Probably one of the worst character flaws that I could think of, somebody that I could never be friends with, is somebody who can't laugh at themselves, somebody who can't handle self-deprecating humor, somebody who can't handle being the butt of the joke. Honestly, I'm the type of person that if you're my friend, I'm gonna rip on you, I'm gonna roast you. One of my best friends since I'm 13 years old has had to deal with being 
being roasted by me for 16 years straight. And you know what? We're as close as it gets. You can't take yourself so seriously. In fact, how can you improve as an individual, as a human being, if you're unwilling to laugh at yourself or look at your faults? And it's the same concept. I can't be friends with those kinds of people. I cannot be a leftist either. I can't associate myself with them culturally or politically because they just can't handle humor. They can't handle being laughed at. They can't handle being the punchline. Everything is way too serious, blown out of proportion. It's hate speech. It's bigotry. It's, I don't know, some sort of phobia and leading to violence somehow. And that's why they ruin everything. That's why they're ruining the entertainment industry. That's why they're ruining comedy. And they'll have you believe that what they're fighting for is so righteous but they're fighting to build the world in the image of a character flaw. A character flaw that's inherently toxic and doesn't work in relationships, that breaks relationships up. And people are wondering what's causing the mass fracture, all of the division in modern day. Well, folks, it's this. It's the puritanical BS from the left. But of course, it's a mix of things. It's not just the puritanical garbage. It's also the patronizing tone and the self-righteousness, otherwise known as Democrat elitism, the better than thou, the whole holier than thou, the richer than thou, the more cultured than thou. <laughs> Right-wing peasant. You think Olive Garden is a real restaurant? It's a common theme. It's a common trope that we see on the left. Once again, a reason why it's so hard to be on that side culturally and politically. It's just pretentious. Nobody wants to be around those kinds of people. And we see this phenomenon materialize constantly. Actually, here's a great example from just the other day. Look at this CNN Chiron. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck marry in Vegas among civilians. Among civilians? It's a phenomenon that we see all the time. Actually, here's another one just from a couple days ago. Oh, well, actually, I was looking for the tweet and it looks like the individual who posted it deleted their account and also deleted the tweet. But here's actually a response to the deleted tweet where the individual wrote, quote, normal people don't pay $40,000 for childcare. This is a ridiculous statement. The initial statement from this left-wing Washington, D.C. elitist was, we're spending $40,000 on childcare for our two kids, I believe, or it might have even been one. And then she followed up with, I don't know how normal people do this. As if people who aren't left-wing elitists living in Washington, D.C. aren't normal. You know what's not normal? Being a pretentious, pompous Washington, D.C. wannabe aristocrat, paying $40,000 for other people to raise your children because you're too busy focusing on your career. And then, of course, there's the looking down on you. I'm still astonished that, that some folks, uh, and, and I, I felt this, I was testifying in Congress yesterday, uh, some folks seem to really uh, struggle to let go of the status quo. Pete Buttigieg is just astonished that some folks find it hard or struggle to let go powered vehicles in favor of electric vehicles, even though electric vehicles are way too expensive, way too inconvenient. The only ones that are moderately affordable have terrible range, are absolutely tiny. You can't even get from one charging station to another. I mean, you could only use them as basically a golf cart driving around your little community. And you could spend like $5,000 just get a used little car car instead of spending 27000 to get yourself a Chevy Volt or whatever it's called. I don't know if my numbers are correct or even the name of the vehicle is correct, but you guys get the point. And of course, the point of this video at large is that modern leftists are just insufferable. They're elitists. They're cringe, they're condescending, they're patronizing. They can't take a joke, they can't laugh at themselves, they can't laugh at other people. They get offended for other people. You can't say this, you can't say that. They rewrite the dictionary, they tell you what you can and can't do, what you can and can't say, what is and isn't acceptable. And I choose not to walk on eggshells and have to apologize for every second statement that I make because I hurt somebody's little feelings. It's unsustainable and it's toxic. And it all boils down to what I said earlier. It doesn't work in relationships unless you're totally whipped and can't stand up for yourself. Then you're being bullied. Once again, it's toxic. If it doesn't work in relationships, if it doesn't work in the real world, then why would it work in the political realm? No wonder we're so divided because these people are impossible to get along with, impossible to have a conversation with. Everything is hyperbole. Everything is a threat to democracy, a threat to their existence, hate speech fascism, blah, blah, blah. And I just don't care for it anymore. But one thing I do love is just existing on Twitter and watching the phenomenon that is you can never be woke enough for the woke mob and watching these sad leftists having to constantly justify and apologize for their statements. They're very benign, regular Olive Garden statements because I have to admit that may be peak content. Thanks for watching, folks. That's what I got for you. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and I'll see you on the next one.